Hey y'all, Pokemon Red using only one shelter was one shell of a good time. So let's continue this week with a goopy Pokemon. This week, I'm gonna try beating Pokemon Crystal using only one Slugma. As usual, the rules are I can only use Slugma in battle and I can't use any trainer items in battle. By the way, if you like this kind of content and wanna see more, be sure to subscribe and check out more of the videos on my channel. Slugma is yet another one of those Pokemon that Game Freak put behind the Elite Four since you can only catch it on Cycling Road in Kanto after you've already beaten most of the game. But in terms of the actual stats, well, it's pretty bad. The special attack is decent, but everything else is, like, really bad, especially speed. Guess they don't call this thing sluggish for nothing. Our best moves are fire and rock types, but unlike Macargo, Slugma isn't rock type, so we don't get stab on it. Stab normally means same type attack bonus, but today it means slugs typing absolutely bad. Alright, let's do this. Off at Professor Elm's lab, I use the Universal Pokemon Randomizer to replace Cyndaquil with Slugma so that our rival will pick Totodile. Pretty obvious here that the water type starter is going to be the hardest thing for Slugma to handle, especially with our low special defense. Slugma is a red hot spicy snail, so I nicknamed ours Escar Ghost Pepper. I couldn't fit the pepper part in, just like Game Freak couldn't fit Slugma into the Johto region. Slugma starts off with only Smog, a super weak poison type move with only 70% accuracy, which doesn't even make sense, because how are you supposed to dodge a cloud? Anyways, Slugma is just way too weak to beat bugs at level 5, the lack of bulk is really not helping, and we don't do very much damage. So after some grinding, at level 8 we learn Ember. Totodile resists fire, but it still does way more damage than Smog, and combined with poison residual damage, we're finally able to defeat Bubs. Heading off to the gym in Violet City, I take on the flying type gym leader Faulkner and lose kind of a lot. His Pidgey spams Mud Slap, which lowers our accuracy, and the Pidgeotto comes out, gets all fussy and gusty, and we lose! I could just as easily grind for levels of the Bellsprout Tower, but instead I do things the hard way and reset until accuracy decides not to troll us. Not too spicy yet. After reaching Azalea Town, I first go to take on Bugsy the Bug-type Gym Leader. He's a glorified grinding session for the upcoming battle with Bubs. At level 15, we learned Rock Throw, which is double super effective against the Scyther. And Ember quickly cremates his Chrysalis. Don't get too excited though, because Bubs is up next, and that's where things really start to get spicy. Speaking of Bubs, just outside the entrance to Elix Forest, it's time for another rival battle. I'm going to refrain from showing too many failed attempts at trainers during this video because the rival battle alone would make this one pretty sluggish, but I thought it was important to show you the best attempt that I had before we teach Mudslap to Slugma. And I know some people really don't like Mudslap, and to those people I say, I don't care. Croconaw is just too bulky and hits way too hard with Water Gun, and that's assuming we even get past the Ghastly without being put to sleep or paralyzed. The only chance we have is thanks to Mudslap. Otherwise, we get knocked out way too quickly. And I'm able to speed up the damage process a little, thanks to the residual poison damage dealt by Smog. But just know that moving forward, every rival fight with Slugma was kind of a struggle. Okay, so it's at this point in the Hot Ones challenge that I'm starting to feel my lips burn. Next up is the Goldenrod City Gym and Whitney's stupid mill tank. This was the most frustrating battle, even worse than the rival battle before. Basically, mill tank has rollout and we're a slug. Fire is weak to rock, and Slug is apparently weak to Cow. Are you picking up what I'm putting down? I tried so many times to get hard in front of the Clefairy before the Milk Tank comes out, but Clefairy can call big damage moves with Metronome and also mimic Mud Slap to lower our accuracy. I only end up winning on an attempt where Metronome calls Baton Pass, which switches Clefairy into Milk Tank while passing along all of its stat changes, including the accuracy drops from Mud Slap. Of all the things I've seen in challenge videos before, this has got to be one of the weirdest ways to win a gym battle. Off at the Burnt Tower in Ecruteak City, I have to take on the rival Bubs once again, and once again, he's an absolute menace. I'm not able to win until I pepper in a few extra levels and Slugma learns Amnesia. It's a move that raises our special defense by two stages, meaning we can finally stand a chance against Water Gun. I said a chance though, not a guarantee. Lots of things go wrong. Haunter usually uses Curse, which immediately ends the battle, and when it's not cursing, it's licking our slug, causing it to paralyze, stiffen up, and be unable to move. It takes an hour of resetting to just get to the dang Zubat, and even then, it almost flinched us out of a win like an absolute bat hole. 
And another time, I even lost to Magnemite Sonic Boom. Ay ay ay. Next up is the Ecrutic City Gym Leader Morty, and thanks to Curse, this battle is very frustrating. It's not quite as awful as Buff's before, but still pretty egregious. It takes dozens of attempts to get a battle where Slugma doesn't get cursed, and during those attempts, Gengar usually puts us to sleep and eats our hopes and dreams. So, every dozen or so attempts, we don't get cursed, and it takes a dozen or so of those attempts before we're finally able to win. Is this getting a little frustrating? Well, yeah. After scraping together a win against Morty, I surfed over to the Sea and Wood City Gym to take on Chuck, the fighting type gym leader, but to my surprise, I could barely even get to him. There's a set of consecutive battles in this gym against a Hitmonlee and a Hitmonchan that I could not get past for the life of me. This took so long. Hitmonlee's jump kick hits like a truck, and our frail snail just can't handle it. I think I spent just as much time trying to get past these two trainers as I did trying to beat Morty. And these are just some random blokes. I tried taking on Chuck after those two meatheads, and turns out that was a bad idea, so instead I switched gears and battled Jasmine at the Olivine City Gym. Steel is weak to fire, so it should be easy, right? Wrong! Ember sucks, and I feel bad about it. But after peppering in a few more levels, we hit level 36 and learned Flamethrower. Now that's a spicy meat to bug. True to our nickname, now we're spitting hot fire, and Jasmine just can't handle the heat, so she got out of the kitchen. You know who refuses to get out of the kitchen, though? Chuck. And I'm not saying that just because his wife thinks he's chubby. This battle was also pretty frustrating. His Polyrath takes very little damage from our flamethrower and washes out our slug with Surf. Primeape can use dumpy little moves like Rage and Leer, so it gives us a chance to set up Amnesia, but even so, I just keep on losing. Weirdly though, Chuck foregoes Surf when we're at just a sliver of health and instead opts for a highly inaccurate Dynamic Punch, repeatedly, letting us cheese out a victory. I guess Chuck was worried about our special being too high, but come on my dude, it's only 7 HP. Nothing left to do now but take on the Ice-type Gym Leader Price. His Seal and Dugong troll us a little bit with headbutt flinches, but they also like to use Rest, which gives us extra chances to go for Amnesia. Seal resists Flamethrower, Dugong is neutral, and Pile of Swine is super effective. So we've got ourselves a Goldilocks situation on our hands here. Ew, could you imagine eating Slug Porridge? As if porridge weren't bad enough. Oh, gross. In the Team Rocket Radio Tower anime arc, we take on the rival Bubs in the basement underground. And at this point, even with Amnesia Boost, his Feraligator is just too bulky and does too much damage for us to win at our current level. It's not until level 50 where Slugma learns Body Slam and we are able to win, and not because of Paralysis. We learned Rock Slide at level 43, and even with the occasional flinch, that wasn't enough damage to make it work. Since badges in this game boost not only stats but also the same type of move as that gym's theme, Body Slam does significantly more damage than Rock Slide because of Whitney's Plain Badge boosting normal moves. So yeah, we're a little bit higher leveled, but don't worry, we're still underleveled for things to come. Now for the last Johto Gym Leader, the Dragon Leader Claire. Her Dragonairs are programmed to spam Thunder Wave, and that makes this battle super frustrating. I pepper in a few more levels so that Slugma's Body Slam will be a 2 hit KO on the Dragonairs. This reduces the chances of us being paralyzed by Thunder Wave, but even so, Still happens a lot. We need Amnesia to survive Surfs from the Kingdra, so it's not until we get some pretty good paralysis luck in both directions that our Magma Mollusk is able to fend off Claire's Salty Seahorse. You know, this challenge isn't anywhere close to Spinarak levels of hard, but it is starting to test my patience. Before the Elite Four, we traverse Victory Road to take on our rival Bubs one last time. For once, Bubs is not a problem. In fact, I beat him on the very first try. This is entirely thanks to him leading off with Sneasel, which leaves us free to set up Amnesia because Sneasel is such a bad Pokemon in this game. That challenge, by the way, will be coming to the channel pretty soon. For now though, we smack around Bubs' Pokemon with ease, which is a refreshing change of pace considering how much time I've spent battling this clown thus far. This battle's kinda like a nice sip of milk after a ridiculously spicy wing. All right, here are the stats and moves at the Elite Four. Slugma is already at level 56, and honestly, I can see it needing even more levels. It's holding the Quick Claw just to help make up for Slugma's abysmal speed. 10% of the time, we move first every time. Up first is the Elite Four Will, and once again, we are trying to deal with having a low bulk and speed. The best strategy here is to paralyze the lead Zatu, and then set up Amnesia. 
Because, without Amnesia, it's really difficult to take out the Slowbro without losing all of our health to Psychic. With 40 base attack stat, we really don't do much damage with our physical attacks on the Slowbro, especially when it's boosting its defense with Curse. We're at a high enough level at this point that Flamethrower can deal with the Exeggutor and the Jinx, and the Quick Claw even comes in clutch, letting us outspeed the Jinx before it can use a Psychic. Superb! It takes a little bit of luck, and even more perseverance, to get the Paralysis on the lead Zatu in order to set up, but overall, having to fish for a Body Slam Paralysis is not nearly as bad as other strategies that we've used in the past. Next up is Koga, and this battle went off without a hitch. And since there's nothing else to say, it's now time for Fun Facts with Andrew! Did you know that a snail is just a slug that lives in a shell? So basically, slugs are just homeless snails! Which is pretty messed up when you think about it. Because in this economy, the bank will let a slug pay more money to rent a shell than it costs to buy a shell, while still telling a slug that they can't get a loan to buy their own shell because it's just too risky. <sighs> on a completely unrelated note, Super Thanks and Super Chats are now available on my channel. Well, after that non-solicitous tangent, next up is Bruno, and I can't believe I have to say this, but I actually had a lot of trouble with it. His lead hit Montop knows Dig, which is super effective against our Slug. We take way too much damage, and then his Onyx outspeeds and Earthquakes us right into the ground. Even if I Body Slam paralyze his Hitmontop, there's just no way to make it past the Hitmontop, the Onyx, and then the rest of Bruno's Pokémon. So, there's nothing left to do but grind. We're not just peppering in a few extra levels here, we're annihilating our taste buds with them. I entered the league with 10 more levels, and by the time we get to Bruno, our level is finally nice enough to win. Side note, I was under the impression that Slugma evolved into Ligma at level 69. Huh. Guess my game is glitched or something. Anyways, with the extra stats, we take so much damage between attacks and Sandstorm that we're barely able to survive long enough to win. And even at this perfect level, I had to reset so many times before all of the planets aligned and we finally got just what we needed for a victory. Next up is the Dark-type Elite Four member Karen, and this battle is the exact opposite of the battle with Bruno. With Bruno, I expected to breeze through it, yet it was really hard. But with Karen, I expected to lose a bunch, yet we won on the very first try? What's going on here? Her Scumbreon missed its sand attack, so yeah, that's a great start. And despite the paralysis from her Gengar slurping on her slug, we managed to survive long enough to knock out all of Karen's Pokémon. I just... I just don't understand. What kind of a weird world are we living in where Karen is easier than Bruno? We're talking about Bruno, people. The guy who's too dumb to figure out how a shirt works. Anyways, I rate this battle. All spice, no flavor. Last up is the champion battle with Lance. I'm not exactly confident going into this one, but nevertheless, I'm ready to party. His lead Gyarados always sets up Rain Dance and usually goes for Surf, which I know will wreck us. Weirdly though, when the battle starts, he sets up Rain Dance, but then he goes for Flail at low health. Yeah, Flail does more damage the lower your health is, but still, Lance is absolutely tripping if he thinks that's gonna do more than Surf in the rain. And this wasn't a fluke either, he did this multiple times. Besides that weird little quirk, Slugma isn't able to handle the rest of Lance's team at this level. Amnesia doesn't even help us when he just repeatedly goes for Hyper Beam with all of his Pokémon. So guess what we have to do? That's right, more levels. Yay! I just love grinding. It's the best! Now that we're at a higher level though, Lance finally starts going for Surf again. I guess he realized that he was being a bit daft by going for Flail. But now that he's wised up, we're back to relying on Body Slam to buy time for us to use Amnesia. Not only do we need the special defense for the Gyarados, but Lance's last Dragonite knows Outrage, a very strong Dragon-type move that is actually special in this game. Yeah, Outrage is one of those moves that changed from special to physical once the physical and special split happened in Generation 4. Even at this level, it takes a while to win, because Lance's Dragonites usually paralyze our Slug and make things even harder for us. After many tries, we finally get good enough luck to beat Lance's Dragons, and I'm very happy to be done with this Elite Four. And with Lance defeated, we have become the champion of the Pokemon League, but you know the run isn't over yet. I'm always going to consider beating the final Trainer Red as the true ending, unless of course a Pokemon is just impossibly bad. 
With the Elite Four defeated, I hop on the SS Aqua and sail on over to Kanto to take on their HM leaders to earn the right to challenge Red atop Mount Silver. The first seven gym leaders were not much trouble at all, so now it's time to take on the final Kanto gym leader, Blue. He's got some pretty good Pokemon, and considering just how much Slugma struggled with the Elite Four, you already know this one's going to be tough. I tried everything, to no avail, until I taught Slugma the TM for Curse. That's right, that move I'm always complaining about is going to help us win. You see, Curse works differently for different types of Pokemon. For Ghost types, it cuts their HP in half while inflicting a curse that does 25% of the target's HP each turn in damage, kind of like cutting off your arm just so you can use it like a club to beat someone. For non-Ghost types, curse raises your attack and defense while lowering your speed, but since our speed is terrible anyways, we don't really mind that at all. With the combination of curse raising our defense and leftovers healing some HP, Blue's lead Pidgeot is a perfect opportunity for us to set up not only curses, but also amnesia. My, how the tables have turned! Our slug has gone god mode! While once we feared even mere table salt, now we fear not even oblivion. Maximum attack, maximum defense, minimum speed, and nothing can stop the unbridled fury of a slug once scorned. Except for Red. Yeah, I guess I got a little carried away there with the power trip because Red is a problem. Let me put it to you this way. Even at level 83, and with maximum attack boost, Body Slam can't take out the Blastoise in a single hit. And even with Amnesias, Slugma takes too much damage to survive Surf and then finish out the battle. At level 90 though, we finally stand a chance. After a bevy of curses and enough Amnesia to make even an elephant forget, Slugma is finally able to withstand Red's Pokemon. And once again, we've unlocked God Mode! Blastoise goes down in a single hit. Snorlax goes down in a single hit. Nothing can stand in the slimy snail trail of my sinister slug! Cower before me, puny mortals! And with that, the challenge is over! Slugma was such a weird case for a challenge run. For most of it, it was kind of bad, until it learned how to forget the past and use excessive profanity. Then it was kind of awesome. A little strange, but I guess sometimes that's just how it S-car goes. Well, as always, I really want to thank you for making it to the end of this video. These videos are a lot of fun, but also a lot of work, so I really do appreciate it. There's a playlist on my channel where you can find the rest of my Pokemon Challenge videos if you want to check those out as well. And if you like this kind of content and want to see more, be sure to subscribe and enable notifications so you'll know right away the next time one of these episodes is uploaded. And let me know in the comments what other Pokemon you want to see, and I'll probably do it. Next week, I'm going to try to beat Pokemon Crystal using only one Mantine. Anyways, until next time, 